that button. Okay, we are live. Welcome. Happy Friday, everybody out there. If we haven't met, I'm Kat Trulinos with Tada by Cat Next Level Staging and Design, where we exercise magical transformation for your space, whether selling or dwelling. We're talking all things home today, and I am so excited because the lady over here that I haven't, she hasn't shopped yet, is talking all the way from Rome, right? You are in Rome, right, sweetie? Rome, Italy. Yes, I am. And Sanja Radovanovich, I hope I did that close enough. That was perfect. Okay. That was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> My sweet, dear friend, president of the European International Association of Home Staging Professionals, amongst many other platforms that she is spreading the word, the knowledge, her expertise and talents throughout Europe, really throughout the world. She's going to share some nuggets with us today. So if you've ever been curious about what's going on in the rest of the world about selling, dwelling, decorating, architecture, etc., stay tuned, share this, watch it on the flip side, etc. Sanja, welcome, my dear. Thank you so much. I know it's like late at night. Yep. <laughs> it is. Thank you so much for having me on your show. It is a true pleasure and a privilege. So <laughs> it's, I'm it's really honored pleasure. and it doesn't matter that it's late at night. <laughs> and, and that's what you're all about. No matter what, get it done, show up. And that's what I love about you and Thanks. so many people love about you. Thank you. Um, so what would you like to share? There's so much, and I know we talked about a lot of cool things pre-show that I, I, you know, I'd like to talk about again. We try to keep this at about 30 minutes, but share with us a, a couple things that you think our, our viewers um, might be interested in, you know, some stuff they don't know. Like, did you know? And, and you know, I'll just kind of start off with saying, you know, I, I know, and, you know, having had the privilege to actually speak and attend your very first uh, meeting um, conference um, in Europe, I mean, I met so many people from so many countries, and Europe is much different. You know, the spaces are different. Um, the way the real estate transactions are worked, if you're a realtor and you're watching this, are much different because uh, the listing agent doesn't get the commission. I think the buyer's agent does. Is that the deal? Delio on and that? It also depends. Yes, that's changing. But, you know, Sarja has had an uphill battle. It's been steady, but she's consistent in terms of educating um, sellers and realtors on the benefit um, of professional staging. So talk to us a little bit about that, Sarja, what the, the climate yeah. of the difference. And you know that we're celebrating the 50th anniversary since home staging as a concept has been developed and created by Barb Schwartz. So yes, January 9th, 50 <laughs> years. If you're watching Barb, <laughs> also for my aunt, yeah. um, let me tell you, honestly, we're struggling. We are, but I'm not giving up when it comes to educating and informing, um, you know, the buyers, the sellers, the real estate agents, brokers, investors, builders on multiple tangible benefits that home staging brings to the table. Why are we struggling? And I'm like, oh God, it's been 50 years since the concept has been created. But of course, um, everything that is invented or created, or it starts in the US, it takes some time to come to Europe. So staging came around almost 10 to 15 years ago, according to the country that we're speaking um, of. Let's remind everybody, US, okay, 50 states. And then we have Europe, which is a continent, and geographically speaking, made of almost 40 something countries that come all under the same continent umbrella. And this means so many different cultures, mentality, languages, and also, of course, the ways the real estate has been sold. Um, that's also why the differences in home staging are so unique because everything it has to do with its geographical location. Like if we compare 
for example, uh, Scandinavian countries, they're very far north, and Portugal, by the way, we're going to talk about the conference coming yes. to Portugal as well, yeah. or, or Spain, that, that these countries are very close to the you know south bottom of Europe. The differences are massive. Mm. Weather, culture, mentality, markets, and also the way we live in our properties. It is very minimal, the way of life in the Scandinavian countries when it comes to um, the furniture, accessories, the colors, and nothing bright and nothing is almost shining in the Scandinavia in terms of colors. And then you come all the way towards uh, towards South and towards Italy and towards Spain. And vibrant. <laughs> vibrant, very yellow, and of course, a lot of blues because of all, you know, the, the Mediterranean Sea that we have, and of course, um, others as well. So um, we're struggling because while we had Barb creating the industry and the demand for us by educating, informing, and preaching in all 50 states for over 10, 10 years, home staging as a profession came to Europe without having spread before no, no knowledge about it. So that means that there was there is a huge offer of our services, but how many brokers or real estate agents or investors know actually who we are and what are the benefits of staging? So education is the key, not only for the future professional home staging professionals, but most of all for all those real estate professionals who are working within the real estate industry who want to make the most out of the transactions. We're speaking oh, okay. money. I want to stop you right there. <laughs> okay. Because you know, that transcends continents. And, you know, as much as, I know you have a, a, a much, you know, a deeper curve in terms of, you know, from, from the U.S. Uh, to Europe, you know, we're in a, in a market where, you know, and again, it depends on the market, uh, the area of the country of U.S., but, um, you know, many agents, they're hopping on getting their license and they think, oh, well, it's just going to sell. So why, should, you know, and I, I, I'll, I sing this praise almost, yeah, exactly, money. This money, money, universal, money. like worldwide, money, 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 money. Money, money, money. So this is the best time. I don't get tired of sharing it. This is the best time that you need to squeeze every dollar of precious equity out of your seller's property. You're going to make them so happy and you're going to make more money. And the third leg of that, what I call three-legged table, branding. If you in this, you know, in a in a market where they're flying off it, well, I don't need to do anything. Well, really, why do they need to hire you? When someone new comes along, when the market isn't, you know, has changed, which it will, um, they're going to look at your portfolio of what you've done and think, well, how did she earn her commission? And, and I'm not yes. saying that's the only way you earn it, but perception is everything. Buyers justify price with emotion. Good staging creates emotion. So why would you want to eliminate that? I love all three of the points, but um, very passionate about the third one. Why? Um, I'm very fortunate to work with the only real estate agency in whole Italy that actually applies home staging services and much more to every single exclusive listing that they acquire. Wonderful. And they are the ones offering home staging services and photography and many more free of charge. It's a complimentary service wow. to all of their clients. And you know, Kath, we we say every home deserves to be staged, okay? Yep. So that it sells uh, faster, at the better conditions, for more money, meaning it doesn't matter the price tag that it comes for. We all need to give the service of excellence to each one of our clients. So since we've started almost two years ago, our branding, just to cough, we, we're called on a monthly basis to speak at events, 
um, were interviewed in national, like financial even, financial newspapers. Everybody wants to know, how is it possible? Like the national average, um, so the days on the market, that it takes for a property to sell in Italy, it's about six months. Wow. Our personal average goes down for the year 2021 down to 55 days. Wow. Because, of course, you do sell properties even in seven days. Our biggest record last year was four days. And this is something that is perceived as, oh, this is unbelievable. I don't believe you. Well, you better should because it's all documented, recorded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not lying here. And what does make the whole difference is because in today's market and this fast life that we're all living, it's not important anymore what you're selling, but the way you're promoting and, and the way you're selling it. Think about also visual merchandising applied to, I don't know, fashion or any sort of goods. So would you pay um, a same price tag for the same pair of shoes? Should they be disposed differently? Like one highlighted in a nice, uh, you know, boutique window with a nice lighting on it, everything clean. And then think about a complete different situation. Of course, it's not visual merchandising. We're speaking about the perceived value of the property. Vacant doesn't make it. And you know, we've been trained. Vacant doesn't make <laughs> doesn't it. Make. No, no, no. We want to take it from wow to wow. And you got to put some beautiful stuff in it to make that happen. You know, and I yeah. think and I remember this and I repeat this because it was on your stage in Rome, beautiful hotel, Omni, I think a gorgeous hotel. And it just it just stuck me, you know, there's so many barb isms, but when she said, you know, staging is a feeling. A feeling. And that just like it was just like such a light bulb reminder that, you know, buyers justify price with emotion, with feeling. And they will justify a higher price every time. You know, so you talk about the visual marketing. Proper staging is the most impactful, powerful marketing tool an agent or seller can have. Period. And you know, you guys are photographers and architects primarily in Europe, starting and then backing into staging, yeah. which is fabulous. You know, which is not the case here, um, uh, quite so much. So you know the the value you know of that impression and the aesthetics and the color and the architecture and how to how to self-correct and and um you know like i i get excited when clients say we've got a problem listing bring it on i love problem listings yeah. because and you know what it's I love. easy to do a model home that's yeah. got the perfect everything neutral you can decide what palette but when you've got older homes that um, they don't have a perfect floor plan, and that really, quite frankly, there is no perfect house, a perfect floor plan, but it needs um, redesigning, you know, with visual impact, with the movable furniture, decor, lighting, rugs, etc. Um, and um, yeah, it's just so st statistics. I had no idea it was six months was average. I mean, yeah, people have got to be blown away in Europe over the kind of results that you all are getting. And I know Jenny, um, the CEO and president of, um, of uh, stagehomes.com uh, and IHOS uh, shared statistics. I haven't had a chance to look at the 2022 yet. I'm sure they probably improved. Have you looked at those for, uh, well, ours would be still have it. Yeah. So yeah, I haven't either. But uh, let's just even take the last uh, last year they were done. You're looking at up to 20% nationwide. So depending on where you live, and this yeah. is I'm called domestic, and your numbers I'm sure are, are way uh, over that. But the bottom line is is that staging works. Um, so why would you not give your seller that benefit? Yeah, and yourself. It really, it, it really gives a tangible impact because you had something that could be, you know, uh, proposed on the market, for example, for 400,000. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have a stage listing price, 425, 430, and, and it could go even higher according to, of course, you know, the, the market. Um, 
you gotta be a visionary. You gotta be a business owner. You gotta be be an entrepreneur to understand that not always who is selling a property is actually willing to invest money in staging. And you know, like us as stagers, we get the least out of the whole transaction. The listing agent gets slightly <laughs> more. And then yes. the homeowner gets it all, which and, is. And I can tell you, we sweat more. <laughs> we sweat more. Uh, but here's the thing: should the agents, the brokers, um, be willing to to offer, as I said, complementary services, and you know, make themselves stand out from the competition? This is the way to do. And on the other hand. What we unfortunately see still in 2022 all across Europe is not only the properties, let's say 90% of the properties are non-staged, okay? Well, for multiple reasons. People don't know about staging, people willing not to invest, or the same professional, real estate professionals who are not educating their own clients, meaning owners, that there is a possibility to have a shorter and a better sale. Yes. They haven't been even educated towards the professional photography. And I like to highlight the importance of professional photography because yes. even the best home staging, with no doubts, if it's not followed by a great real estate photography and also some nice close ups and detailed real estate or uh, interior design photography will not showcase at its best because the buyers, what do they see for the first time? The property that is listed, okay? That's the first showing, and I say that all the time. Your, when is your first showing? I'm it's not. online, so you better be staged and have great photos. If you're not, you're what I used to say when I was in yellow page advertising back in the 80s. Um, <laughs> Oh, Mr. <laughs> Business owner, you don't have a budget for advertising? Oh, you're probably like the person who winks in the dark. They know they wink, but guess what? Nobody else does. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, you know, oh, I think one time in the years that I've been in business, I had a, a realtor, I think, I think his sellers paid for it and it was vacant staging. So it was, you know, up there in the thousands, a big home. Um, but he didn't have them take new pictures. And I was like, Whoa, what are you thinking? Why are you even investing in home staging? What are you thinking? So, you know, when I talk to realtors, I tell them, you know, a consultation, like an occupied consultation, um, you should, you should be offering that. And guess what? You know, I know as a realtor, you know, a licensed realtor myself that, you know, you start spending money as soon as you get a listing, marketing, you know, and flyers and op broker open, etc. So why would you not, you know, hedge yourself and have it look fabulous, you know? Well, listen, if you allow me 30 seconds only, this is my being very thankful today after so many years. You know, I've, stayed, I've started my staging career and I've taken the education within the stagehomes.com. I was back then in Chicago, Illinois, and I had my first and one of my best clients, Beverly Fleischman from Colton Banker in Wilmette, Chicago. She used to offer all the time to all the clients of, of course, occupied properties, one hour complimentary consultation yep. with the stager. Yep. That alone, it did make, um, a very big difference. Now, kudos to all of us because home staging is a communication tool. We know this very well. Home staging is a feeling, um, and this applies mm, most of all, in my personal opinion, towards the vacant. But when we enter the owner's homes, properties that are furnished and occupied, that is when we're also psychologists, best friends because i've learned in almost 10 years of, of of business and experience that people really need a lot of love too people need somebody that is going to listen to them 
who is not going to judge them, who is there to actually help them. It's and, very- and, you know, that's, a, that's a key. Uh, I just want to intercept right here, the judging. Yeah. And, and I, and I, you know, tell realtors this when I teach classes, you know, there is, you know, I, I've gotten business before because, you know, they've interviewed several stagers and the stagers like, oh God, no. Oh, this is horrible. Oh, that's so ugly. You know, it's like, oh, what are you thinking? So exactly. you know, again, it's, yeah, it's like, it's education. And I love to do role play with realtors and show them, you know, okay. Sandra, you do want to sell your home as quickly as possible, right? Get the head shaking. And you want to get as much as money as possible, right? Yes, I, I do. do. <laughs> and you don't want to be living in a fishbowl, which is, that's what you're doing. No. For very long, right? Great. So, oh my gosh, I love this collection of, of crosses you have. But how many is there? 50? Yeah, guess what? Let's get those packed up uh, because, you know, your agent's going to get you moving really, really quick. Um, and we don't want them broken. And we want to appeal to as many people as possible. So, you know, this will help to do that. And, you know, so. Just a short example of how you can talk to people with honoring, you know, honoring what they have. You know, even call me, gosh, those are beautiful. It looks like some of them are, might be from another yeah. country, or is that porcelain or gold? You know, whatever a collection, whatever it is that you know. But you, you know, you gotta be, you know, like you said, you know, be kind, be compassionate, be respectful for their things, and they will be on board. I literally had a realtor go, Pat. She was shadowing as I was doing the occupied walkthrough, and she says, "I told her to do that," and she rolled her eyes at me. <laughs> you told her, and she's like, "Oh yeah, let me do it. Let me do it." Yeah. So you know, I I know you know that you play the good cop, bad cop, you know, and um, you know I had a realtor who not only paid for consultations, she like just blew it out the water. She paid for all occupied. I'm, I'm sorry, all vacant. She did something like 40 million or something. This is before the market got crazy. Um, and, you know, with with the whole COVID thing, we, we offered even some payment plans to where they could pay 50% up front and 50% at closing. I had to charge them a little admin fee um, because it has to go in escrow and so forth. But we made it happen. Like, you know what? You, you deserve to have it staged. You don't have the upfront money, but you got the equity at the back end. Give me fifty percent. We'll we'll build. You know, we'll get the rest at the end, and that was really successful. And this is also part of running, you know, successful businesses: being able to and being actually willing to adapt, so, compromise yes. when needed, yep. and most of all, create uh, long-lasting and re respectful relationships. Like, um, I'm gonna go back quickly to to Maritime Immobiliare, the the first real estate agency in whole Italy that offers includes home staging within the marketing plan. What we have built in the past two years is something that actually even, um, you know, fastened the whole processes. We've been a solid relationship of trust and mutual respect that we go collect the keys directly to the property. The showing a or the listing agents they don't even go preview it before it's even staged. So we're their first person. There's, um, as I said, trust, mutual trust. Yes. And when you build a, a solid relationship, then according to it, and you know very well how we all have our best clients, top clients, and then those, oh, I wish he didn't call me. And then <laughs> like, this one calls me only when he's desperate for staging because probably he went on the market has been sitting there vacant for nine months right received, you know two price reduction now he wants to stage like why didn't you call me earlier you know me you know there's a um, each one of us has their own statistics so um staging is everything in my personal head like listen tell me now be honest has there ever ever been one day that you woke up being like, oh, I got to go and stage a property today. No, we're so happy when we go out there. It doesn't matter if it's a tiny, you know, condo for sale or a luxurious property of, of you know, who knows how many square feet 
um, we're there to serve, we're there to bring value, and we're actually there to bring more equity to all of us. I, I see only positive aspects of, um, of it all, no matter if we're United States um, yes. or in Europe. You yes. guys definitely have, have it easier than we do. Because, like, you know how in America everything is better, bigger? We don't have driveways. <laughs> We need to park the cars many times. There's no parking now. How and do you need to oftentimes man manage up multiple, multiple? I, you know, I traveled after visiting you multiple. I'm looking, wow, no wonder they need cubics, <laughs> you know, yep. uh, which is cardboard, uh, yep. genius cardboard furniture with nice cloth. Because how would you navigate? We're, I mean, we're doing a, an upstairs apartment in the Heights, destaging this week, and the stairs are like this. Fortunately, we used, you know, our apple green small sofas, smaller furniture, and so forth. But, but that's the norm in a lot of spaces in uh, Italy, right? In Europe. Think yeah. about most of the the items don't actually fit in our elevators. Like our elevators are probably made for two, maximum three people. Uh, so uh, meaning, like a bulky armchair, it doesn't fit in. Mm. So fast, they don't. Uh, this afternoon, we were staging a partially furnished property whose owner um, recently passed away. Mm. So partially furnished because the kids has, have already removed things. Yeah. Um, you know, some bulky pieces. But how do we do to make it actually happen? Um, for every problem, there's always a solution cap. There you go. So in Europe, Mainly, we that's we, a thumbs up for you, honey, <laughs> because you have this, this, you have the yes attitude. <laughs> yeah, it's like, listen, it wouldn't be called a problem if it wasn't there, so that you find it a solution. Yes. In in our warehouse, we have, you know, regular couches, sofas, sectionals, blah blah blah. But we have fifty percent of our ownings in terms of terms of sofas that they're called they're called click clack sofas oh. so click clack why because when you need them you click them and they go all the way flat oh we call that a futon here uh not sure but <laughs> yeah yeah no we call it a futon i have one in my my creative room it, it's a it's a sofa and then I click it, mm -hmm. and I can make it. I yeah. can make it flat, really. A, a, it it's flat as a bed eventually, yeah. but uh, it's um, it's a three seater, you know, yes. nicely looking ones. Yes. And this is how we actually manage to bring it up for a second, third, fifth floor, ah. um, when necessary, and most of the time, it, times is necessary because of the you know tiny elevators. You just got gotta work it out and. It is what it is. So we're all adapting, um, finding creative ways, but also yes. when it comes to my institutional position and of course responsibilities. The, here, the key here to expand the knowledge and the comprehension of the benefits of home staging is to keep informing. Absolutely. And um, you know, we, we're, we're such a young European association. We've been founded recently, less than five years ago. But I'm so proud of, of the board and as well of, of our members at the same time. We're doing everything that it takes to make sure that our services, I mean, they're valued and perceived as beneficial as they are. So one of our biggest responsibilities as the leaders of IHASP Europe is to level that market. You remember when I was saying at the beginning, Barb Schwartz created the demand for our services and, and back there she was the only stager. Right. Then more stagers come up. In Europe, it, it is to completely the opposite. Stagers came up, so many schools offering home staging courses. And then you have all these nice staging professionals who are unable to make their living constantly only thanks to staging so for us like i'm an interior designer but many architects as well are including staging services after of course being trained professionally to become a stager 
to integrate that as an extra service. Uh, there was a huge impact, of course, because of COVID and, you know, the market, uh, of course, I'm speaking mainly for Italy because that's the market that I do live. Right. And when you said six months is a lot, in 2019, the average time that the properties were sitting on the market was nine months. Mm -hmm. So we went all the way from nine to six, and I'm 100% positive. Should you ever call me again in 18 months time from now, I'm going to give you even better numbers. And all this because we're informing and educating the clientele. Newspapers, TV shows, um, anything that it takes and anything that brings value and that makes uh, the whole process being quicker um, towards the recognition of our profession, which is the mission of the association. We have established some fantastic and important collaborations uh, with FIAPSI, the International Federation of Real Estate Professionals, and as well as with the European Association of Real Estate Professionals. The European uh, Association basically has 29 national real estate affiliate associations, uh -huh. meaning we have only one umbrella being European to European association. And then we have direct access to these 29 local associations, local meaning national for us. Right. We're going to bring the real estate courses, educating the clientele on why to hire a stager and then allowing our members to strive even more. So education is the key. It, it is the absolute key is, is raising the level of awareness. And yeah, kudos to you and all the board members there in Europe. Um, because it, it, you know, it's funny when, when, uh, when Barb created um, World, you know, International State, uh, uh, Association of Home Staging, I don't think it was international, she kind of talks about this, I don't think it was international at the time, but uh, or maybe, or was that for worldwide staging? Was that no, that was for worldwide. It was like international. And now how many countries? We had 12 at the first mm -hmm. conference, 12 or 15. Um, yeah, so basically when she was founding IHASP, the attorney told her, are you sure you want to go with the international? Because yes. who knows about staging among the U.S.? And she said, watch out, because this is going to go worldwide. So the Worldwide Staging Service Week first was national because we didn't have no presence internationally besides the first affiliation with the Italian Association at that time and with Japan that that was um, secured back in 2015 by Barb. And then with the Jenny's leadership taking over and with, of course, my and our contribution in Europe and you know, the vice president of the European Association, Paloma Harrington, she is the international globe uh, director. So she's been speaking about home staging to um, in Dubai last week. We yeah, travel is... wherever we're called to, to bring information. She traveled um, to Dubai or was that- She just it? came from Dubai. Yeah, she really? just came. Oh, wow. I was like, lucky you. Oh, I was just goodness. in France and she was like, Oh, shut up. You went to France. I'm going to Dubai. So, um, and, and this is also um, a way for us to serve the industry. We're so committed because we do believe in magic of home staging. Absolutely. It, yeah. it, uh, it touches many people's lives in their next step new home journey. And of course, you know, spills over to, you know, you're a designer turned stager. I'm stager. And with COVID, we've pivoted into more design. Mm -hmm. And of course, now into the custom uh, biophilia, et cetera. It's like, um, you know, that's a whole nother episode. Uh, you know, where, how is design different than staging? And do they cross roads? Yes, they do, but they're still different. They're very different. Yeah. Um, and it's a different mindset. Also, you know, uh, when I'm staging for someone, I don't really care if they don't like, um, you know, what I'm doing <laughs> because it's all about the buyer. <laughs> design clients. I had a design client. I was at, we were out shopping for rugs. She goes, well, I don't know. It's just me, Kat. But I, I go, wait a minute. It, it is just it me. It's all about you. It's all about you. 
So, well, yeah, that's, that's different, the right? <laughs> well, I told you, I've shared this. I've started as an interior design, and trust me, I was loving the whole process in designing and creating spaces for my clients, me, people who are going to be living in that property and digging into their minds, the way they're living the properties, what are their needs, uh, what are the wants, combining everything into design magic. And then I've discovered staging. God forbid I receive a phone call for a design project. I don't enjoy them anymore. Mm. Yeah. Here's what I enjoy. I enjoy uh, doing a Zoom consultation a across the country. Uh, as Joanne uh, would say, I, you know, I don't have a put on my bra feed. And so uh, but I can share my magic <laughs> with, with a consultation like this. You know, that's wonderful. But, you know, there is a, um, I, I think if you're at a place where you can kind of pick and choose, because design clients can be all encompassing. Some of them can really suck the marrow out of you. Um, but some of them can be very joyful and I find, you know, we're getting ready to promote our decorator for half or full day because oh, wow. it's the closest thing to staging. I love the fix of being able to assess the needs, assess the problem, come up with a color palette, pick the happy colors, figure out what they want, maybe do some shopping and come in and stage to dwell. I love that because it's, it's the closest thing to staging because I because I like to make decisions quick because in staging, as you know, you have to make decisions quick. You can't, you know, belabor over and shop and this and that, you know, you're going, okay, boom, the call counts this, we need that, we self-corrected this, we need this size art, we need it, you know, and, and so it's very fast. Um, do you yeah. want to share some of that? Uh, of, of what, what is your reasoning for liking staging more than design? Um, I think because of two reasons. Since I've started staging, it's almost 10 years. So I have grown up as a person and I'm probably in my best decade ever where I feel going to that maturity that, and, and of course having the opportunity to choose, okay? Yes. Where you really wanna go ahead and what clients to, and what projects to accept but also what um, is always so attractive to me, it's because we all have different cultures and mentality. So my US design clients who have really joy to work with, the Italians have so many <laughs> great features and aspects as people. And, um, you know, it's also about the behavior and the way of being, uh, basically, yeah, everything that falls under cultural aspects. Sometimes it takes forever to take a decision. Um, and, and I've seen that it comes down to a point where that professional relationship is not there to, to be like mutually respected, okay? They think like hiring a professional um, who's gonna work with you on redesigning your own property where you're living, not selling, somehow becomes one of your friends that you can call at any time of the day or night during yeah. the weekends. So you gotta set your tones. Yeah, and, you, have to set your, you have to set your boundaries, yes. Because boundaries. Yes. And not necessarily in this country with this culture and mentality works. So being, a humble and kind person and human being, I find this very difficult for myself to set the boundaries. And yes. honestly, let me chillax on Sunday rather than being, you know, bombarded with WhatsApp vocals, uh, like five minute long vocals, which are almost podcasts. I was thinking that I don't really like that shade of gray or you know, whatever the shade is. Yep. And I thought maybe we should go a couple of steps backwards. And I'm like, it's Sunday. So without- so can, I, can I share with you something yeah. that I have um, developed that helps circumvent that? Mm -hmm. 
And so after I have an on-site consultation, and I have a flat fee for that, whether it takes me an hour, hour and a half, I've had clients say, you know, well, what's your hourly rate? I don't charge by the hour because quite honestly, I can do in one hour that might take three for someone else, not to be boastful, but that's the reality of my talent training and experience. Um, so then I uh, provide them a scope of work and I give them a DIY and a full service. So the DIY would be very helpful for these ones that want to just, so I let them know for X number of time, like I have one lady, she's in New Zealand right now, so I extended it because I knew she was going to be out of the country and she's waiting for some stuff to be delivered. So here's my flat fee for a DIY. You can, you instead of me shopping, you send me three of the best, whatever mm -hmm. you want to purchase, and I will give you my professional opinion based on our on-site consultation, what's going to fit into the color scheme, uh, the uh, design scope, the design needs, et cetera. Um, phone calls or text, et cetera. So, the, and if it is writing the contract, if it goes over three, you know, then there's a fee for that. Uh, but you're then being paid for. You know, the first time a client does that, I tell them, you know, I can answer this, but any more than two questions or three questions, we would we would uh, go with a DIY package. Um, it, it seems uh, to help, and I've had many people go, yeah, that sounds great. I don't mind shopping. It'll be cost effective for me, uh, but now my time's being paid for, you know, because um, really that's all we have is our time, our time, talent, energy, and training. Exactly. And I don't know, how's traffic in Houston? Because it's really bad in Rome. I don't want to go shopping for anybody else. And I'm not being here. Um, yeah, but but, you but know, I, like, count, I charge for shopping if it's online, too. Okay. If I'm shopping online, oh, that takes you're time. Doing it. Yeah, the only thing I shop in person is is the accessories. Yeah, so you give me a budget. You have eight hundred dollars to spend on accessories. I'm usually going to go to one to two stores. That's it. But I'm being paid for that. Here's my fee for shopping. Um, you know, you got to get paid. Can I give you now the thumb up? Where's the thumb up for you? <laughs> I can yeah, go forever you know, like this. And that's okay. The people who don't want to pay you, it frees up your time for the people who know, like, trust, and value you and are going to pay for your expertise. Because if not, you know, people will suck your time and expertise. You know, Barb talks about early on in staging even, you know, where um, maybe she's giving a, a just a walkthrough um, and they want to pick her brain and you know, there's just a gentle way to say as soon as we agree to work together I'm gonna to put all that into detail, you know, or what have you for you because people will it's instinct They, they want to suck as much, you know out of you um, Sometimes folks just want yeah. I said, you know what you can pick my brain. I'll be there for an hour and a half tops Here's what my fee is and you can drive the bus in this terms of my, pick my brain on anything Backsplash selections, flooring, uh, paint, lighting, etc. You know they can drive the bus. I'm just going to get paid for it. So um, exactly. Yeah, it, uh, this was one of issues back when I arrived from United States to Italy. I've seen many colleagues listen to this, giving away the mood boards for vacant ooh. properties. And here ooh. we're speaking, talking again. Um, and I was like, no, 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 no. You're not going to give no mood boards. Have they signed a contract with you? Uh, are they your officially, are they officially your clients? Do you have the keys of the property? And why would you even share what you're going to put within the property? Okay. Yes. That's your own knowledge. And these are the design concept. They should see only the finished product because you might put something within the mood board and you don't have it anymore in your warehouse you might want to change you know idea of what is going to go in and most likely you don't want them to pick your brains because you're just giving it out to them before even securing a project yeah so this is not shifting better yep oh you have i i have yeah, early on one of my first yeah i had um, my daughter actually do a whole, you know, because it, it was for a big apartment complex, do a whole thing for the game room, you know, thinking I was really going above and, you know, beyond and we ended up not getting 
who knows how much of my ideas they use, probably. <laughs> but you, but know, you had you the best learn. intentions. You live and learn. When you know better, you do better. So we're go going on about 44 minutes. You, thank you so much, uh, Sanja, again. Um, I do. Before we sign up, though, I, I want you to share uh, the big conference that's coming up. Uh, this is the, is it the third or fourth? I know we didn't do, you didn't This do, is the third. It's the third, third. European conference. <laughs> And this is the conference we're organizing since 2019. And of course, because of the yes. pandemic. Yes, exactly. So uh, it's been dragged. And uh, we, we had several attempts um, between March 2020 and last um, September. And then we said, OK, 2022 it is. So, um, so I want everybody to uh, give us the date that that's happening, and you're going to be doing it virtual and on site, right? You're going to have it virtual. It's going no? to be only on site. Only on site only. We're not going to live stream it. It is not going to be recorded, so there's okay. no opportunity um, to see it afterwards. Or meanwhile, we we are live there uh, May 28th and May 29th, Lisbon, Portugal, Pestana Palace Hotel. So. We're giving the opportunity this time to people and staging professionals, but also real estate professionals to register according to their needs. One day or two days. The second day is, is uh, wholly dedicated to senior staging consultant or senior staging specialist, sorry, which is an IHAS designation. It is going to be thought by Jenny Norris. And this again, because of the longevity levels here in Europe, we have tons of seniors Wonderful. who not necessarily go into a retirement homes, but they end up living until the end of their days into the house. So is this staging to live uh, for the seniors? This is going to be staging for self for seniors, helping them um, to better understand the service and to, for us, to better understand how to work with seniors, mostly. Okay, so I, I'm confused. Is this for them to sell their space or to aging in place? We call that here aging. No, 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 no. Um, we don't have that here among in, in in Europe. Like, basically, they sell before they die. Sorry for using this word. Uh -huh. Or once they pass away, uh, it's done. It goes directly as uh, what is it called? Heredity. Uh, yes. Kids. Inherited, yeah. So what happens there as well, the kids not being seniors, they're so emotionally detached to anything that belonged to their, you know, parents. Uh, but with seniors who are still um, alive, of course, and are willing to move with their kids or in certain facilities, having to, to learn how to deal with them, it's crucial. In Europe, we have so many, what they're called, um, knickknacks, tchotchkes? Yes. Uh, our homes are filled, okay? I would, Maybe, never, I would never guess everything looks so, you know, I look at Patrizia's, everything is so yeah. minimalist. But, you know, that how we stage and how we live, two different two things. Different you know, things. Too much stuff. <laughs> yeah, and because of the demographics that we're, yeah. you know, talking about. Yes. These are people who have saved, okay, yes. uh, for and generations. And held on to every little gift at every holiday. Yeah. Thank yeah. God this is not happening nowadays. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, second day is a senior specialist stager. Um, first day we're going to have, we're having actually a great lineup of speakers, educational sessions a great real estate panel. We're going to speak about diversity and metaverse within the real estate and how this all applies to staging and most of all diversity and inclusion when it comes to who are today's leaders among the real estate industry. Mm -hmm. Think about this. NAR president, a woman. FIAPS is worldwide president. Mm, starting from Janu uh, June 2022, another woman who's leading the International Association, a woman who's leading a European association. So for us, this is like um, a fabulous constellation of galaxies. 
Absolutely. Women I, I just read that, that uh, women hold 51% of income earning, which is pretty phenomenal when you figure that, you know, historically in corporate America, men are paid more than women. Yeah. So we now hold 51% of the market in uh, yes, wages and earnings. Yeah, which is pretty phenomenal. So that's great kudos to you for uh, the woman power lineup. <laughs> I wish I could be there. I'll be there with you oh. spirit for sure. And if you'd like to watch this on the flip side, it'll be on our YouTube channel. If you haven't signed up for our YouTube channel, go to Tipped Out by Cat. And you'll see it. Sign up, hit the bell so you get notified when we have new episodes. And is there any uh, parting words uh, that you'd like to leave with our audience before we sign up? I know we're at 50 minutes. I, I I'm just going to say arrivederci. Oh, arrivederci. Oh, mi amor. Thank you so Thank much you. for watching. Thank you so much for having As me. Always, stay Pleasure. positive, stay hopeful, and stay connected. And thank you so much for connecting with Sanjo Radovanovic from Italy today. Have a beautiful, beautiful weekend, and we'll see you next week. Tune in. We'll be talking about a very special topic on the myths of getting help with your down payment. So if you're looking to buy a home, you need some help on down payment assistance, tune in next Friday. Alrighty. Arrivederci. Arrivederci.